Hello and welcome to Searching the Scriptures, a daily podcast where Bible topics will be discussed and Bible questions will be given Bible answers. No opinion, just Bible. For this episode, we're going to be concluding our five-part series on five false premillennial doctrines. This episode is going to be dealing with the swords into plowshares prophecies. If you did not listen to the last episode, I invite you to search on YouTube, searching the scriptures, is Jesus coming again to set up an earthly kingdom? When it comes to the swords and the plowshares prophecies, we're really dealing with two verses, Isaiah chapter 2, verses 2 to 4, and Micah chapter 4, verse 3. In Isaiah chapter 2, we read at verse 2, And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on the top of the mountains, and shall be exalted above the, above the hills, and all nations shall flow into it. And many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us uh, of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth uh, the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among the nations, and shall rebuke many people, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. And in Micah chapter 4, in Micah chapter 4, we read verse 3. And he shall judge among many people, and rebuke strong nations afar off, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. These are the two verses where we get the prophecies of swords into plowshares. These are prophecies about the kingdom. Yet people come along and say, this hasn't happened yet. So obviously, everything you said in the last episode about Jesus coming again to set up his kingdom and you claiming that the kingdom has already come, that's wrong because the kingdom hasn't come yet. These, these prophecies haven't been fulfilled. But again, the New Testament tells us the kingdom has come. In Colossians chapter 1, we read verses 13 and 14. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. The kingdom has either already come or we are not able to be saved by his blood today. The kingdom has come. That's what we have been translated into. We have redemption through his blood. Therefore, the kingdom must have come. Peter said that Jesus was raised from the dead and is sitting on God's right hand. Acts 2 verses 30 to 36. Therefore, these swords into plowshare prophecies must also have come to pass. And you might get a confused look on your face saying, well, how is that possible? Where is this peace? There are wars. We don't have peace today. The peace is not an earthly peace. Just like God's kingdom is not an earthly kingdom. The peace would be found in God's kingdom. It is a spiritual peace. That is what was being prophesied in Isaiah chapter 2 and Micah chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 2 shows us the peace of the kingdom of God. In Ephesians chapter 2, let's read verses 11 to 18. Wherefore remember that you being in times past Gentiles in the flesh who are, uh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who are sometimes afar off are made near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace who has made both, sorry, for he is our peace who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of two one new man, so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you which were afar off, and to them which were near. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto one Father. The peace that we have today is found in the kingdom. Gentiles and Jews were separated from God. The Jews had the, the commandments. They had the law of Moses. But again, the law of Moses couldn't remit their sins. Sin separated them, even though the law of Moses pushed their sins forward to the blood of Christ. 
The Gentiles had left God completely. They were aliens to the commonwealth. Both could be saved by the blood of Christ. He is our peace. Jesus is our peace. Peace is found in the kingdom. It is found nowhere else. In John 16, John 16, we're going to read verse 33. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Our peace is found in Christ. It's not found in this world. Isaiah or Micah were not speaking of an earthly kingdom. The kingdom has come. We can have peace in that kingdom. There are no wars in that kingdom. We will not do that in the kingdom of God. The spiritual kingdom. So this swords into plowshares, prophecies, false doctrine. Jesus coming again set to set up an earthly kingdom, false, false doctrine. Wars and rumors of wars signifying the end times, false doctrine. The Antichrist about to be coming as signifying the end times, false doctrine. The rapture, false doctrine. These are five false premillennial doctrines that we need to give up in order to obey Christ. If you are not a Christian, the brethren here in Toronto would love to study the Bible with you so that you could hear the word of God, believe it, and obey it before it is everlastingly too late. If you'd like to set up a study, you can send us an email at Toronto East End Church of Christ at gmail.com. On behalf of the East End Church of Christ in Toronto, Canada, I'd like to thank you for listening to this episode. For free online Bible-based material or to get directions to our meeting place, you can visit our website at www.eastendchurch.org. While there, you'll also find links to more of our podcasts, as well as links to the live broadcasts of our services. Should you have any questions about this or any of the other podcasts you may have listened to, you may leave a comment below or email us at Toronto East End Church of Christ at gmail.com. Please join me, the Lord willing, again in the next episode when we will be discussing another topic from God's Word. Goodbye for now, and have a great day.